But let's let's finish this up with uh, some weightlifting. Let's um, do it. Let's do it. I so I'm an exercise science major, um, and that's people who train to be personal trainers, you know, strength and conditioning coaches. Um, you know, we can go on to be um, occupational therapists, physical therapy, athletic training, and stuff like that. Um, so you know, I took a lot of classes like exercise physiology, um, you know, kinesiology, and um, you know, a lot of other classes that. Uh, help me um, train athletes, you know, for, for any sport um, and, and make sure that they are getting the best out of weightlifting and, and being, you know, um, in the in the workout room um, and translating that over into their sport. And the number one thing that I've learned is that there aren't a lot of exercises that you're going to do in the workout room that are going to translate over to swimming. So I'm actually, even though I'm an exercise science major, I'm actually not a huge advocate for uh, weightlifting for for swimmers at least, um, and because there's there's just not a lot that's going to translate over, right? Now doing power towers, right, um, buckets or whatever you call them, um, pulleys, uh, um, those resistance bands that you tie to your waist belt weight, or your waist and uh, um, parachutes, any drag suits and stuff like that, like that is going to be more beneficial because you're training in the water with that resistance, building that strength, building that endurance, training your muscles. That's going to be more beneficial than really anything you're going to do in the water or uh, I mean in the in the workout room, right? And so a lot of a lot of um, college programs that have their athletes train in the gym focus on um legs on that vertical leap because of um pushing off the walls for your turns and then getting off the blocks quick which i think there is a correlation for that so if you are going to train anything um train your vertical leap squats um jumping and, and stuff like that um that has a correlation with um pushing off the walls for turns and then getting off the blocks quick i mean caleb dressel's another great example of that um but at the same time doing squats you're 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 vertical right but pushing off for a streamline and swimming you're horizontal and so there's not much of a correlation there um and so i'm not the biggest advocate for it but if you are gonna do any sort of dry land work just just do functional body movements right just even just body weight movements push-ups you know, sit-ups, or actually, I'm going to talk about that. Don't do sit-ups. Um, dips, you know, lunges, um, side lunges, front lunges. Front lunges are huge for, you know, for being explosive off the off the block. Um, just, you know, regular uh, body weight squats for those pushes off the, off the wall and streamline um, and stuff like that. But you don't need to get too crazy where, you know, you're deadlifting <laughs> 300 pounds. I mean, that just doesn't translate over into swimming. Really not a lot of things you do in the gym really translate over into right. functional movements as athletes. Right. Um, but if the number one thing we know is you have to have a strong core as a swimmer, right? Everybody knows that swimmers have sh- like nice abs, like strong core and stuff like that, right? right. Um, but I too often I see coaches having their kids like do sit-ups. And it's like, the functional movement of a sit-up is you're laying and you're you're getting up like this, right? Where in the sport of swimming do you do that? Oh, you know, your your dives. For <laughs> sure. Freestyle. You do that. All the time. The only <laughs> part you see that in is like the flip turn. Yeah, right. But we turn. we do like a hundred sit-ups for just one flip turn, and that flip turn you hardly have any resistance, right? So you mm. don't need to have this functional movement as a swimmer, right? But we use our core functionally as a swimmer for rotation, right? But too often we have, you know, coaches have their kids do, oh, we're just gonna do a bunch of sit ups, yeah, 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 yeah. No, do rotational movement. Right. Grab a med ball, throw it against a wall, right? And then go back this way. Grab a resistance band, attach it to a wall or a pole or something, and then hold it out in front of you. And you get that anti rotation while you're trying to resist resist that pull of you going back that way. Do planks, 
right because it because it isometrically it holds your core to be you know stronger do russian twists like do more core exercises than just a sit-up i mean it's it's just not gonna benefit you most of our core activation is in this rotation and so you gotta have you gotta be training that rotation when you're doing core exercises. Another thing is your is your lower abs, right? Do you know a lot of those leg lifts, a lot of you know flutter kicks, you know maybe even some scissor kicks and stuff like that. Uh, Russian twists are, are a great one, but you gotta train um, your core to be functional for for the movement you're doing, right? And if you're not doing this movement a lot in swimming, then what's the point in training that? You don't swim freestyle like this. It just doesn't make sense. You only do a flip turn for that in that movement so you need to you know when you're swimming you have a lot of rotational um movement and so grab a med ball and you know pull you know hold it up and then as you pull down rotate over and you're getting that rotation you're also working on that pull like think about what you're doing in your stroke and try to find an exercise that applies to that and it's called functional movements, right? If if you if you're not, then what you're doing in the gym is really pointless, right? For brush hookers, a lot of them do, you know, a lot of bench press, but the pull is this way. The resistance isn't this way. The resistance is this way. And so doing a bench press with the resistance going that way really doesn't benefit you, right? right. And so find find um, you know back exercises where you're pulling here, right? You don't need to have a big big um, strong pecs for for breaststroke you gotta have that strong back really for any any of um stroke freestyle backstroke butterfly um breaststroke you gotta have a strong back so do a lot of back exercises a lot of lat pull downs that's gonna help with fly that's gonna help with freestyle that's gonna help with backstroke too a lot of lat pull downs and, and stuff um like that but the number one thing that i think you can do on the land on on land in, in the weight room and stuff like that is plyometrics plyometrics builds power right um box jumps right um and, and stuff like that you know landing and then jumping and, and all that other stuff that's that's gonna build power um and a lot of programs are adopting into plyometrics but that's really the number one thing that you can do in the weight room on land that's going to translate over into swimming because of that explosiveness off the blocks that explosiveness off the turns you really want to have generating a lot of power and plyometrics are huge for that so research plyometrics research what that is find um you know exercises that translate over into you know swimming there's really good box jumps where you're you know you're a staggered stance uh, or a split stance and you're jumping up and you're having that really nice power so plyometrics are huge and then just do body weight exercises again push-ups you know dips lunges side lunges um and then find functional movements in the gym that are going to translate over into being in the water stop doing sit-ups because even in your life, you <laughs> you never do the the only movement that I can think of that's gonna help with a sit up is getting out of bed or like <laughs> getting up from in, when you're laying down, getting up right. from that position. Right. But like, how often do we do that movement? It's like twice a day when you get up out of bed or you're on the couch and you get up like that's it, right? right. So stop doing sit ups. Find functional core movements that are actually going to translate over into being, you know, everyday stuff, activities, and then also being an athlete. Um, and then um, plyometrics and, and uh, body weight exercises. You don't need to be super heavy and, and super crazy in the gym. Just find movements that translate over into what you're doing in the water. And that's really going to benefit you the most, the absolute most. Yeah. Awesome. Anything you want to add? Me, I'm not. I'm not a big weightlifter. Um, you know, I wait. I used to, you know, lift some weights, you know, here and there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, me. I never really did a lot of research. I kind of just went in the gym and just, you know, you just listen to whatever I tell you. To yeah, do. honestly, I did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I mean, I, I think it gave me a big, you know, I wasn't gaining any muscle, like as you guys can tell. Like, I'm not a big guy, um, but it did give me, you know, sort of like a confidence booster. Um, you know, yeah. I came into the next season being like, oh, I was working out this whole year. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'm ready. I'm ready to get in the water and, you know, start training. Um, but yeah, big, that's, big that's a, that's another thing too, is when you are lifting, say like lap pull downs, 
don't lift heavy. Don't go 150 pounds for 10 reps, right? If you're thinking about what you're doing this exercise for, you're doing it for a butterfly pull, right? And so you don't just do 10 strokes of butterfly for, for an event. You're, you're doing probably around 20. So drop the weight, do like, you know, 80 pounds and bump uh, pump out 20 reps go for right. endurance rather than strength right because right. when when you start lifting heavy that's when you build hypertrophy which is um your which is your muscles getting bigger right and so what what ends up happening especially at you know younger ages when when you know fifth you know 14 to 16 when, when you're doing that your stroke changes when you're getting too big your stroke changes and, and being in the water is going to be different and you're and and you're not going to get faster so if you're somebody who goes to the gym and you lift a lot and you're like oh i'm not getting faster that's probably why is your your body's changing therefore you're going to be changing in the water that's why resistance training like in the water pulleys power towers buckets whatever you know um parachutes and and those uh resistance cords those stretch cords like those are going to be the best for you because you're training for that in the water as you're functionally moving and you're building that strength and that power um there's actually a lot of really good science behind uh that type of resistance training in in the pool rather than resistance training on on dry land and in the in the gyms and so those will be more beneficial for you um, than being in the gym and pumping out heavy weight because it, it's going to change the way you swim and sometimes you're not going to get faster. You think of athletes that go into colleges who are really you know top athletes and um, they don't do well their freshman year and it's because they're in the gym they're in the workout rooms and they're pumping out a lot of you know weight and building up a lot of you know muscle and their swimming is changing it's different right but then their second year i mean they have a huge breakout think of ryan offer right huge breakout year second year one end season the 50 um it's it's just gonna be um it's gonna be different so think of your long-term goals you know do you want to train are you training for the olympics then probably start implementing heavier weightlifting sessions but if you're somebody who's like you know i just want to make it into college i just want to be better endurance wise have a little bit better strength you know have that confidence do endurance sets right pump out you know 20 to 30 reps rather than just 5 to 10 reps uh, and that's really going to help push you forward in, in your swimming yeah